Uh, they operate on all these presumptions. Now, we don't know what presumptions they are because I don't know what anybody's presuming about anything right now, right? You can make guesses about what somebody's presuming based on their actions, but for the most part, we have no idea what people are presuming about uh, life in general or what people are thinking. All we can do is make statements of facts about ourselves. So that's where we start to dismantle their presumptions. And some real easy questions are, you know, well, number one, if you show up and you're just an agent of that, of that legal person, they're presuming you're an agent in the capacity of a public servant because that's all that hearing is for. The court, the summary convictions court is a internal tribunal for public servants, period. It's for agents of the government, right? Because if you were charged under a statutory offense, only public servants can be charged with a statutory offense. So you're kind of proving the presumption just by even being there. So you're helping them with that. Um, so when you show up for court, if you don't deal with it administratively, which I much prefer now and I went to that last time, is when you walk in, you can do nice, simple little things. Um, like say, oh, I'm here regarding that matter. And when they say, well, who are you? Say, well, uh, I'm a man. And you can say, I'm the, I'm the, the sole shareholder and I'm the, the director of the legal person. Can you say that I'm here to affirm my understanding? No, I would just say it. Okay. Don't get into any, anything fancy with them, right? That's a kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. That's why, I mean, there's, there's three words in this matrix when you look at it, right? You, you can't screw it up if you keep to the least amount of words possible. Unlike the guys in the States that are trying to argue UCC law with, with, with judges in court, where they go on five-minute tirades of, of, of stuff that most human beings couldn't even comprehend, right? Keep it simple. Hey, I'm here. Take your birth certificate. Say, I've got this. Say, i got this birth certificate right here. Uh, I was sent this when I was born. Um, Say, it's my understanding this makes me the sole shareholder the legal person. Say, and as such, I would assume that I can appoint directors or executors of my legal person, so, I, I, so I'm the director of it as well. Is anybody disputing that? Like, that's a nice way of saying that, isn't it? Right? If they freak out at that point, well, you know what, that's kind of their problem. So. But I will say they don't like that stuff happening when they're surprised by it, especially because that's a good way of embarrassing them all, right? Because again, and I touched on this last time, the judges are only operating on the information given to them by the Crown. The Crown has claimed that you're a public servant. You have to be for the Crown to be bringing you there because that's all they have jurisdiction over. So that's all the judge is operating on. So you can clean up that little presumption before you even get to court by sending stuff down to the court file, contacting the Crown in advance and saying, hey, I think your, your cops may, made a mistake. There appears to be a misunderstanding because uh, when they pulled me over, uh, they, they must have assumed I was a public servant when they were beating me because I'm, I'm not aware that I, that I am a public servant. And that's, you know, you can use negative averments at that point too, which I like, you know, I haven't, that you haven't produced any facts or evidence that I was acting as a public servant at the time I was arrested and I believe no such evidence exists. Put the burden on them to prove you're a, a public servant and when they don't reply, we got a month to deal with this stuff. And they give us a month. They give us a grace period. You know, they're, they're not dragging us. Well, they have. They have with me, especially because I was being quite belligerent. They normally don't drag you right into court and, you know, try you right there on the spot. And out comes the guillotine and you're done. When you demand habeas corpus, it's like that, though. Um, yeah, I mean, habeas corpus, it's what, uh, produce the claim or produce the body kind of stuff. Body, well, it's the body they, of the child. Yeah, the that too, the, the body of evidence, that kind of stuff, yeah. The old thing, I was like, you charged me with murder? Yeah. Where's the body? If there's no body, there's no murder. Why not make the, the argument more simple, though? Like I say, like there's all there's we uh, uh, believe me, I could write a book on ways you could probably go into court and make arguments and drag it out as long as possible in the whole nine yards. But By it gets. The time these videos are done, it will be a book. It probably will. Yeah, exactly. Eh. You so. Get a video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we like to keep it simple, and that's uh, very nicely contacting the crown in advance saying, hey, I believe there's been a misunderstanding. I'm going to give you a chance to, 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 to remedy the situation. Right? And then have him basically ask him for some evidence of some kind. If he doesn't uh, answer to it, then you respond to him or you default him. Well, you default him. Until, yeah, you just default him. Right? You don't need to wait for anything. Yeah. Yep. You just write a letter or does it have to be registered? Does it, uh... No, when I, when I default somebody, I write up something called the, uh, I used to do notices of default, where I just send them a notice that I've defaulted them. If you really want to get fancy, write up a certificate of default. And when you go down to the court, 
have the magistrate stamp your uh, in affidavit form that they never replied to you. So, yeah. So if you've sent your request in the form of a negative averment that says you haven't produced any uh, any evidence, uh, I haven't seen, or or if any facts or evidence, and I believe no such evidence exists that I was a public servant at the time I was detained and, and a complaint was made, right? Then you default them on that. You send that into into the court file with a with a motion to dismiss the charges. Okay, that has to be an affidavit or this. It doesn't have to be an affidavit, no. I, I'd prefer it is because an affidavit is what? Judgment and commerce. An, ad, an unrebutted affidavit is judgment and commerce. That's judgment. You don't even need a Queen's Bench Justice for that. That's judgment. You dealt with it outside the court before there was even a hearing, and it's done. No judge can overturn that. Nothing. Right? So that'll probably happen to you once. Especially if you have a fee schedule in place. Because now what happens, as soon as you have the summary convictions uh, charges dealt with, you're going to come right back around and you're now going to enforce your rights, which are in Queen's Bench. And we spoke about that in one of the previous videos. Because Queen's Bench is where you enforce your common law rights, your equity. I was damaged. I'm an injured party. You take it to Queen's Bench, you'll get a hearing. And if you file it properly, and you've got unrebutted affidavits, and you've got your claim settled in advance. Never go to court unless you've won. Never go there until you've won. I believe I learned that six years ago from a Winston Strout seminar. I never knew what that meant until I understood what Queen's Bench was. And then I realized, well, yeah, when we each have lawyers and the case has not been settled, it's just a couple of idiots rambling back and forth, which is what lawyers are, the judge has to make a determination based on all the, 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 the crap that's gone on in the courtroom in front of the judge. When you use it properly, and you file with a unrebutted affidavit and all your paperwork done A to Z in advance, the only reason you're going to be going there is for default judgment. There's going to be no reply from the other party. In fact, they can't reply because you've already got them in default. It's done. You already have judgment in commerce. In fact, that's one of the maxims I quote in the front page of my commercial lien. So I like to do the commercial lien process and I've simplified it and improved it a whole lot. But then I take the completed... Yeah. That's where it all came from. Um, okay, so just we'll cover two more points real quick to kind of go over the same trinity, the triangle that we spoke about before, just as further proofs of what's going on. And that's getting into Admiralty Law and Commerce, which Walter brought up there, where we got the same thing going on here, where we've got the guy who owns the goods that are being shipped on, on a vessel, on a boat. So you've got the, if you want to call that an investor, what would you want to call that? The, uh, well, why don't you label the triangle as either, you can list it like ship, well, let's just call it, yeah. corporation. Well, let's just call it a ship, right? <coughs> so we've got, we got a merchant vessel. Who owns all the goods in the hold that are being transported, right? We'll call, just call it an investor, whatever you want to call it. Ship or, or receiver or holder? Yeah, well, just, yeah, so investor or uh, owner, property owner. Sure, owner, property owner, the owner of the ship. There we go, property, no, not the owner of the ship. The, prop the owner of the property in right. the ship, the goods being, uh, you know, beaver pelts back in the day, back in the, the Voyager days and whatnot, right? So you got the property owner owns all this materials in the ship that are being shipped. It's owned by another company altogether. That's irrelevant in this equation. Then you've got the captain oh, of the ship. It doesn't, it's different here. Responsibility for the Yes. You got, so you got the property owner of the property being shipped, you got the captain of the ship, and then you got the, 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 sh the ship, or the, the people that work on the ship. Let's see, the, the crew, the sailors, right? So the crew of the ship. The thing you got to remember about the ship is that it's its own person. It is its own person, exactly. And, and, and the cargo that's on the ship is basically being put into the care of that person. The yeah. So, so title to the ship is irrelevant. Yeah, the title to the ship is irrelevant. It's who owns all the equity in the hold that's important, right? Because they're contracted to do it. And of course, the legal person is obligated to repay the people that own all the materials in the hold, if it gets lost or stolen, that's where all the insurance came from. But either way, you've got the same relationship going on here. You've got the property owner, you've got the captain, you've got the crew, right? The other, the other triangle is, and we'll get into this another time, I'll just touch on it real quick tonight, so we remember to go into this, um, is the government, right? The government is its own trust. Your legal person that was created is just your agent in dealing with the government. That's your agent in commerce. 
So the same way that the government makes up one role of your uh, legal person, you make up one within the government and that's what kind of what makes the union complete. And you are basically a shareholder of the government. So instead of sole shareholder, you're now one of 33 million something shareholders in the government. So you now come, your legal person is now the investor in the government. And who do we all vote for once every four years or whenever they're <coughs> deemed to be incompetent and somebody calls an election? Right, so the ministers. So we vote for them. Ministers are the people who direct the government. Right, they set government policy. And they set government policy for who? Government employees. Right, not a very good S. So, you're not the investor in the government. Your legal person is. <clears throat> and that's why the name on the voting registry is the all capital letter name. It's the name of the legal person, your interface with the government. So it's a dual trust relationship, right? So you're not directly connected to the government. You're connected to the government through your legal person. That's why th the best term I've heard for it yet is agent in commerce. I love that one. I think it's the most apt term there is for this kind of stuff. So when it comes to the government, that is the relationship. Between so every, every relationship that's out there regarding commerce usually, not usually, revolves entirely around this matrix. And then the only question is, well, who's the equity holder? Who's the directors and who's the employees? And you can usually deduce that from the information that's around you. And that's drawing your own presumptions that you can leave open to other people to rebut if they don't think you're correct in your dealings. That's why it's always best, and I've told people this before, so we'll just get into a little bit of philosophical stuff here real quick. We'll call it short because it's a really hot night and I just want to get home. I was sick for three days, so. Um, always contact the government in advance and set your roles, set your status in advance. So there's no question down the road when it comes to a bad time to be figuring that kind of stuff out. Everybody wants to leave stuff until it's, until it's just the worst possible moment to get everything all sorted out. And that's court. That's a bad time to, to start establishing your roles with the government, right? So contact them now. Send them off a notice. And we talked about this in the last video. It's my understanding that this birth certificate, don't, don't be coy with these people. Just come right out and say what you mean. I mean, that's what substance is, right? There's no form to this. Substance. It's what your understanding of things are. And if you're wrong or they think differently, they can correct you and they can negotiate with you or send you a deal. Oh, no, 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 I, you know, no, that's really not it, actually. It's our opinion that, you know, blah, 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 blah. You, you can't consider politeness when you're seeking understanding. Exactly. I want to understand this. So I'm going to be as blunt and as simple, keep it simple, simple, stupid as possible. It's my understanding that this birth certificate was generated by the filing of that particulars of a live birth into the vital statistics. That would make me the investor. That, would make, that, that means that I own all the equity in whatever was created, being this legal person. Do you, de do you deny this? You know, if no timely rebuttal, it is agreed that. When they don't rebut, your, your statement stands. You know, and then go on from there. And then just say, well, then that being the case, I understand that uh, you know, I'm appointing, uh, I can appoint myself as the director. So, so unless you can provide lawful excuses to why I can't, this is your notice that I am the director of the legal person. I've never seen any evidence uh, or been presented with any facts that I'm obligated to perform a function of government for any reason. Do you have any proof that I am? Like phrase it any way you want as long as you can prove that the, 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 the substance of the statement is what you want it to say. And that's why I try to keep people from trying to use all these fancy words to prove how smart they are. Okay? I don't want to do that. I want to use the most simple dumbed down word I can possibly use that leaves absolutely nothing open to interpretation. I want nothing open to interpretation. If you're using a word that you want to make sure they know what you mean, then you include the Black's Law definition of that word in your, you know, I believe that blah, 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 blah. Like when I contacted, uh, one second, when I contacted the uh, city prosecutor that time and I said, I believe that I own my property in fee simple as um, as defined in Black's Law Dictionary. And then I gave the Black's Law Dictionary term, which meant absolute authority over my property. 